Antimatter is an elusive and fantastical beast, one that eluded our detection for quite some time. One of the biggest questions looming over physics today is why is the universe made of matter rather than antimatter? What is the difference between matter and antimatter that resulted in this imbalance that was formed way back at the beginning of the universe just after the Big Bang? To put it simply, we don't know, but that hasn't stopped us searching. In a paper recently published in Nature, scientists have been looking at this question in the greatest detail to date. But to do this, they need to create, capture, and hold antimatter. This is not an easy feat and required decades of work. So how did they do it? Let's discuss it. It may be counterintuitive, but making antimatter is actually quite easy. Well, at least in a multi-billion dollar particle collider it is. Antimatter is a natural byproduct of high energy collisions. So the goal is to wait for an antimatter particle to be created and then capture it while separating it out from other matter byproducts to ensure that the antimatter and the matter don't annihilate each other. This is commonly done with a combination of electric and magnetic fields, which bend matter and antimatter particles in the opposite direction. These particles can then be captured in what's called a penning trap, which uses a combination of magnetic and electric fields to trap the atoms so that they cannot touch the walls of the trap. A very similar technique was also used last year in which antiprotons and positrons were captured and then combined to form anti-hydrogen. These scientists then use lasers to cool those particles down to probe the energies of anti-hydrogen atoms and compare them to hydrogen. In this case, the scientists looked purely at antiprotons and were investigating the charge to mass ratio of the antiproton versus the proton. So how does one measure the charge to mass ratio of an antiproton? To begin with, the particles are placed within a penning trap, which has a large magnetic field, in this case, roughly 1.9 Tesla, and they are cooled down to 4.8 Kelvin. Then ultra stable voltages are applied to the trap electrodes, which forms an electrostatic quadrupole moment to stabilize the particles. The motion of particles in this type of trap is very well understood as a series of harmonic oscillators, each oscillating at different frequencies. Some of these frequencies are related to the trap themselves, while others are related to the charge to mass ratio, such that one of the frequencies is equal to the charge times the magnetic field that's applied divided by 2 pi times the mass. So the scientists measured this frequency for both the antiproton and a negatively charged hydrogen atom. They use this negatively charged hydrogen atom because then they don't need to flip the signs of the fields in the penning trap, and it only requires a small correction to get the same result as the proton itself. They found very little difference between the antiproton and the proton's charge to mass ratio, only measuring a difference down to 16 parts per trillion meaning that antiprotons and protons act in a very similar fashion. One of the lead scientists said, this result represents the most precise direct test of a fundamental symmetry between matter and antimatter, performed with particles made of three quarks, known as baryons, and their antiparticles. Another open question about antimatter is does it interact with gravity in the same way and with the same strength as matter does? In other words, does antimatter obey Einstein's weak equivalence principle? That objects with the same mass respond the same to gravity independent of their composition or structure? Well, this is not a very simple question to answer as it's not very easy to move a multi-billion dollar particle accelerator to somewhere where there's a different amount of gravity. Luckily, the Earth is moving and the ellipticity of this orbit gives us a method for measuring under different gravitational forces. To do this, scientists took four periods of measurements over the course of 500 days, which correspond to different gravitational potentials from the Sun. Comparing these measurements between antiprotons and protons, they showed very little difference, with these measurements giving us an upper bound of a difference of less than 3%. While not as precise as the charge to mass ratio, this is still quite a leap forward in developing our understanding of the differences between antimatter and matter, or in this case, lack thereof. 
the researchers had this to say. Space did not directly drop antimatter in the Earth's gravitational field. But our measurements of the influence of gravity on the baryonic antimatter particle is conceptually very similar, indicating no anomalous interaction between antimatter and gravity at the achieved level of uncertainty. We may not know why the universe is made of matter rather than antimatter. But this experiment is a significant step forward towards this goal. And maybe one day soon, we'll know why. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you next time.